be magnified. Come on, I need to hear every voice in this room. How many of you really want to magnify him? Come on, I have made you too small.
Let me hear. How many have King James? Raise your hand if you have King James. Now, only right. those with King James read and let me hear. For when the time he ought to be eaten, he so had a read and our teaching, and he had with me the first principles to all the of God. I've seen babies before. You had a baby in your house, or you know of somebody's baby, or you've seen a baby before. Okay. How many of you have given your mommy's fresh born baby meat to eat before? Meat from the pot or chicken from the grill? Then you are very wicked. Are you giving your baby chicken chicken leg like that to chew? And the baby has no teeth. Then you are very, very wicked. How many have done that? Some of you have done that when your friends are not looking, they push it with their mouth. Eat, eat, eat. It's okay, it won't kill you. Amen. But that is not what, that's not the natural way of life. The natural way of life is when you're a baby, you drink milk. First Peter 2, the Virginia people, favorite verse. And what's this? What's the verse? First Peter, desire the sincere milk of the word. Okay, that's Virginia's favorite verse. Hallelujah. So you know that, listen, when you're a baby, it's the natural thing for you to do to drink milk. Right now, how many of you drink milk? Breakfast, lunch, dinner, milk, 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 milk. And then sometimes they'll put a little bit of cocoa in it. How many of you will be very happy with that? No, I'm serious. How many will be happy with that? Because I can tell the lady that we want to drink milk. Okay. So you should know that if at this age you don't want to drink milk, it do you any good. And I mean, it's just something good, but it doesn't sustain you anymore, right? So this time when you go, you start chewing the chicken, chewing the meat, eating all the spaghetti, and it's just all the different things. So spiritually, at a certain point in your life, you should not be sitting and letting somebody stand. Then you should move on, then the next person will come, then that's the cycle, then the work of God is being done. But it's that we are still taking it to ourselves only. And that will not work. Bernard, you came to my church and you blasted my people. I was so happy for you. I want to see more and more to be like you. Don't share your small corner. Oh, hide in my corner where you are. You hide in your corner. You stay there. You serve your God. It's good. But please, that time has passed. Now come out of your shelter. Come and influence the boys in this room. Influence them for a good thing. You, I'm telling you that you touched my people when you came. You don't know, but you did. And you can do it here too. Don't let me come and say, Bernard, I saw you at come. You and Ben and Derek. I saw you at come. They didn't praise the worship. They're very happy. But I don't see that here. This is where you need to influence. Use the talent God has given you. God has placed you where you can talk to people of your own age and they'll listen. Do you know that they'll listen to you more than they'll listen to me? Half the things I'm saying, some of you are probably right now at our cry. <laughs> Alright, you are probably saying it in your head, then it's fine. But I, that's why I want you to say it. When it comes from one of you, how many of you like I tell Mommy, come, come, come and tell them you have to read your Bible every day. Everybody had their quiet time. Yeah. 